going on, guys? I mean, it's going to be a little bit weird, but you got to get used to it somehow. Um, we're going to go a little bit over uh, what I got for a bow and kind of the parts we put on it. And then a little bit with my arrows, too. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But we'll get right into it. So I do have a blackout to 1.5 um, bow case, soft case. Um, I do like the size, the arrow pocket and other small pockets are really nice, deep broadheads, um, certain small boxes and stuff in there. So I leave my quiver in my case, not attached to my bow. Um, it doesn't, it's a little too tall with my quiver on and right now um, my quiver actually does not mount to my sight because I'm waiting on a uh, bracket for that. So, so I mean, first off, I have a it's a blackout MD thirty two. Um, it's a newer bow. Um, obviously, blackout is the Bass Pro brand um, that they stick their name on other companies' bows. Um, most blackout bows are made by Bear, and uh, this one, in fact, is made by an Elite, so a uh, pretty reputable brand in that case. Uh, obviously, see my front stabilizer is not attached, I got to disconnect on that. Um, or else it won't fit in my case. Um, while I'm talking about stabilizers, I have um, the CBD, or not CBD, sorry, um, CBE uh, front and side stabilizer came as like a twin pack deal. Um, I think it was like the Hunter combo or something like that. Um, really liked that, didn't think it was quite worth it. Uh, before I stuck it on there, but um, really does do a good job of offsetting some of your weight on that right side with the sight and rest, and then when I have to put it on, which is most of the time. Um, we'll kind of go up and down the bow, I guess. Um, one of the nice things, this bow actually came with uh, limb dampers on there. Um, I mean, I had some for my old bow that I could have switched over, but it was just nice to have. I could leave those on my old bow. Um, we'll go peep. I do have a, it's a ham ski uh, Raptor quarter inch peep. Um, I stayed with a pretty large size because um, it's kind of hard for me to look through my glasses, so I end up looking um, on the outside of them most of the time because I, I barely need my glasses. but. Um, it's just more comfortable anchor point wise. Um, with that, I've been using a um, Apex Covert uh, four pin rolling sight. Um, I switched that up a couple of days ago for this um, HHA, I think it's the Ultra um, single pin. Uh, I've really liked that so far. It just seems a lot easier and I don't know quite yet from experience, but um, I could guess that in a low light kind of situation, especially with um, me trying to focus past that, it's going to help out quite a lot. Uh, next part, um, for the rest, I do have a Vapor Trail, I believe it's a Gen 7, um, can't quite remember, um, on here. Um, had an HDX on my old bow, really like them both. Do I notice a difference? Not a huge difference at all. Um, preferably, I probably would have went with a bottom limb if I was going to do a limb driven because uh, I had a dovetail on my old side for this bow and it kind of would rub against and it made me caution a little bit, but. Uh, I didn't end up having any problems. Now it's totally out of the way, so it doesn't make a huge difference. But um, at the time, it was a little bit cautious. Um, 
before we get done, I did throw on a kisser button on there um, probably a month ago. I think it helped a lot um, with the fact that I do shoot a, a three-finger thumb release here. Um, it's made by Blackout. Um, it helped a lot with trying to figure out anchor point wise what I was doing wrong and obviously target shooting it's easy to kind of catch your problems but in the heat of the moment with the animal it, sometimes you don't think of that stuff and it just flies right by your um, train of thought. Uh, going down farther I did just throw a wrist strap on here it's just a Cabela's paracord uh, wrist strap. Uh, I already talked about the stabilizers That's really it. I mean, I'll give you guys a couple close-ups here of the bow, um, and then I'll rip a couple shots for you here. So obviously, I hope I don't have the camera on this one, but this will be a little better view for you guys. Quickly before my camera dies here, um, we'll go over arrows just a little bit. Um, my total arrow weight is about 539, I believe. Um, what I shot my buck with um, is still kind of a test run, but I shot him with one of these 2.3. Um, great chisel tips. Um, I figured I'd give that extra cutting diameter a try. Um, I also have a hundred grain insert in these guys. Um, help my FOC out a little bit there because this um, Valkyrie um, XTs I believe are only 8.8 .8 grain per inch even for a 300 spine. Um, so my FOC is at like a low 13%, I believe, even with that 100 grain insert. Um, it helps obviously have a longer arrow. Um, I do have, it's a factory floor fledge, um, so that has a little bit of weight there. And then I do have um, blackout lighted knocks in there. Um, so that's kind of my hunting setup as of now. Um, I also bought some of the three inch cutting diameter um, Grave, or not Grave Digger, sorry, um, Grim Reaper broadheads. Um, figured I'd give those maybe a shot. I shot the practice sip the other day and it was flying really well out of my bow, so uh, for sure gonna have to give that a shot. Before I forget, um, this bow, it does max out at 70 pounds. Um, I do have it cranked as high as I can get, um, whether that's like 68, 69, um, every bow, you know, is a little bit different in our scale. That Cabell's runs about a pound low, so um, it's it's up there. Um, I got a 30 inch draw. This bow you can go to 30 and a half um, if you need to. Um, I'm just more comfortable with 30. Um, so um, IBO speed on this guy um, is a 337. Um, now am I shooting at the IBO speed? Absolutely not. Um, that's just what heavier arrows do to you, and uh, you got to be maxed out, maxed out everything you got, and you're shooting a toothpick to get that IBO speed. Um, but we're still getting pretty fast, um, even with my heavier arrows. They don't really drop off until that 60 mark. Um, between 60 and 70, there's really that gap between pins starts getting bigger for me. So um, yeah, I mean that's basically it with this guy. Um, if you guys like this video, um, I'm sure 
Luis would love to talk about his bow, so maybe we'll have to get him to uh, talk about that a little bit. But other than that, see you next time.